this is Al Fritz from EarthHealing.info. Uh, we are at Fairmont, West Virginia, which is near the center of fracking. And we have to tell you something about what that means. Breaking. Breaking what? Well, breaking the uh, subterranean structures in the ground itself. Breaking it with high pressure of a liquid, mostly water, but it includes sand and other solvents breaking it in such a way that it will extract the oil and natural gas that's immersed in the fissures. And this breaking is an easier way than what was originally done in the attempts to bring out what they call shale oil. And so it used to be a terrible word for us in Kentucky, but we're in West Virginia and they have the same feelings. And that is, well, shale oil would have had to take away the topsoil and then have these tremendous excavations in order to remove materials which would then have to be crushed and broken into parts and removed. It's very expensive and there's not really a lot of economic value in it as it comes to having savings. Well the new methods were coming out after the Second World War and really developed uh, in later uh, in the last 20 or 25 years into a uh, high pressure, inserting it into a well. But now these new wells are not just things that go straight down. They also have ways with the new uh, engineering where you go down and then you go horizontally in different directions. You can cover a lot of territory. And it does. Fracking is to break it in such a way that the captured oil or natural gas can be removed and brought into the economic world in which we live. So in many ways, the fact that you didn't have to use that sh shale oil extraction means it's something good. And secondly, the oil and natural gas that comes from this, rather low priced. In fact, the natural gas is so low that it's running coal out of the business of electric generation. And so you would say natural gas, which is now moved to such an extent that the United States is an exporter, a net exporter of natural gas. Isn't fracking a great thing? Well, we can look at the world in a mixed way. And it's gray, the whole world is. But the benefits, well, we've already mentioned those. Economic cap cost, the fact that we do not have to use strip mining methods, surface mining methods to do it. That sounds good, but there's some also some economic cost and some environmental cost. And the environmental ones are what is more concerned to us. The economics, well, you lose some, and that becomes an environmental cost. Lose some, yes. You lose some when you drill down and you've got to pipe it and then extract it, process it, and we will show that in some of our slides and how the use of these heavy equipment that, well, you're also losing natural gas, which is mainly methane. And methane, thinking, thinking of, uh, of the uh, greenhouse effects, uh, is a lot more costly to the environment, 23 to 24 times amount as it is uh, using carbon dioxide when you burn, whether it's coal or natural gas or oil. And we know that there is that problem of loss through escape. Now, some people in the Environmental Defense Fund actually say it can amount to 10% over the total process of getting it out of the ground, cleaning it, piping it, sending it off, and making it uh, go to application. And you're losing that amount because it's very fungible. It's very, it's something that's easily escaping, as opposed to coal or even oil. And so we lose some, and the loss could be great. And so we talk a lot about clean natural gas, but the simple fact is it could be dirty if you consider all the environmental costs at one time. And that's why I'm not a great fan of fracking, even though it has given our country and much of the world a lot of good low-cross natural gas. There are other uh, uh, costs, too. The one thing is that when you do this extracting, you're going to have all that solvent water 
it's going to be sometimes you have to get rid of it or the salt water that might come up through the layers too. And so you're, you have a lot of waste materials because that's not just water. As I said, sand, well, that's not bad. But they put a lot of times ingredients that we don't even know what they are because they're related to the various companies in various ways, but they're chemicals and they want to make sure that, that material is able to be used more properly. And so therefore they put in a number of chemicals. Now that material can be lost or pumped out or they have to have storage places for it, what's left over, and that can be costly too. So there's water problems not only there, but in this process of disturbing the land, the water tables and the actual water supply for many people can be in some ways contaminated to where you see the, the picture at times of someone uh, lighting uh, some methane coming out from their water faucet. And so that can happen. And there are this, this contamination uh, processes that will affect other people from those who are getting some funds from having the extraction occur on the land. And so that problem of water is very important along with methane escape. There's other problems too. And one of them is earthquakes. We never think of that right offhand, but a lot part of parts of our country uh, which are really where this extraction occurs, whether it's in West Virginia here where we are right now near Wessel and Mary counties, and also that occurs in Oklahoma. Texas, parts that never have much earthquake at all, and yet now their experience is three, four, and even more at times. And also where they're, ex they're putting some of that water back down and injecting it into certain well areas, it, it just destabilizes the structure of the land too, and therefore there can be earthquakes there too. And so there's a real problem that's involved here, and we have to remember it is that this is making the world a little shaky, and it can have effects, sometimes at great distances, depending how close it is to the surface, and the layers themselves can do property damage. And there's also other things that are involved. This process does disturb the land, and in disturbing the land, you're disturbing the wildlife on the land. And so the wildlife disturbances because of noise is really something that destroys, reduces the habitat of the areas in which this occurs. And so these areas suffer much, the wildlife does, from disturbances that occur. There's also disturbances to human beings too, and you've got to face that fact. We, are all, we all can be disturbed uh, by uh, different types of activities that are taking place. It can be the, either the congestion because it's heavy equipment that's needed to be brought in. And this is on roads that are not built for that, narrow roads, and they can be extremely congested for local people. And so we have noise and congestion, which is really an added environmental cost that we have. There are others too. And there's the emissions that come uh, from the processing itself, and that goes into renewables as being a replacement for these non-renewables, which is natural gas and oil, that is coming from here. So the very traditional way of looking at some replacement for fossil fuels is what we're trying to do. And in doing so, you have to counterbalance that with uh, the actual effect of a cleaner air, which will not be emitting materials into the environment. All of these are environmental costs. Fracking can be considered good in the sense of having an ability to be able to, uh, by a people to be free and more use and independent in their use of environment. And so we have then this placement of something which has changed the economics of environment and energy very much. Uh, and yet at the same time, it can have its effects. Let us think about that. Not everything in the world is a good thing. It's this prolongs, the fracking has prolonged the transformation that we've had to have to go from a non-renewable, which is oil, gas, natural gas, 
and coal to a renewable solar, wind, hydro, tidal, geothermal. These are the ones that are not costly to the environment as those first ones which are fossil fuel related. What this does in fracking is prolong our transformation which has to occur because of the catastrophe that could come if our energy levels, if that is if the temperature of the global amounts go up from pre-industrial times by over 1% of 1 degree now Celsius could go to 2 which is what's coming or even beyond the 3 or 4 or beyond uh, if we continue too long uh, in the uh, non-renewable world in which we live. Fracking is prolonging that and for that reason we should think twice about it and think seriously about it. This is Al Fritz from EarthHealing.info. Come and visit our site, see what we've got and think seriously and go visit the fracking country that is here. It's actually a beautiful location. Uh, and uh, a lot of the people would be happy to see you.